There's an old tradition with deep roots in the Great Lakes region that's experiencing something of a renaissance. It's sauna or sauna, the old Finnish practice of bathing in dry heat, sometimes followed by a plunge into icy water. Over the past several years, a host of businesses have sprouted up in Minnesota and beyond, offering sauna experiences on hotel rooftops and in mobile trailers, and building saunas in homes and backyards. Reporter Dan Crocker went to find out why sauna is gaining so much steam. For Glenn Auerbach, a good sauna starts with good wood. This is red oak, and red oak is a great burning wood and stuff. And, but, you know, you want to increase the surface area. He splits it into smaller pieces, then he carries it into the sauna he built in his backyard in South Minneapolis, attached to his garage. He stuffs the wood into a small stove. So birch bark is nature's gasoline. I like to put some birch along the, along the sides and the tops. He crumples some newspaper, lights it, and then loads in kindling. So now, really, we're in a great spot, so I can close this down and we can do other things for like 30, 45 minutes, and then it's sauna time. Glenn Auerbach is something of a sauna evangelist. He got hooked while hitchhiking in Europe with a friend in the 1980s. He still remembers his first sauna after getting picked up by a woman during a rainstorm. We were literally chilled to the bone, and uh, I remember the feeling about being warmed, you know, really from the inside, you know, that deep, radiant heat, that, that lump of mass, of mass that penetrates within you. He came back to the U.S. and moved to Minnesota. He built his first sauna on a lake in the North Woods. Then he built one in his urban backyard. This was years before the sauna trend had taken hold. All the neighbors made fun of me, but now they all want a seat on the bench. And that's just kind of a testament to how this practice has become very commonplace. To share his love of all things sauna, Auerbach started a website called Sauna Times. Then about a decade ago, he published a guidebook on how to build a backyard sauna. At first, his customers were mainly in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. A lot of people of Finnish descent live in those states near Lake Superior. But since COVID, he says he ships them everywhere. I mean, people are purchasing the book, like you're saying, from all over the world, but in crazy places like Texas and Arkansas and North Carolina, as you know. Auerbach says he started to see interest surge in sauna five to ten years ago, after several studies were published showing health benefits from regular sauna use, including a reduction in fatal heart disease, high blood pressure, and dementia. But to me, it just feels great. You know, I, I, I don't need the prescriptive health benefits and 38%, you know, decrease in this and that, you know, to know it's good for me. I just dig it. After chatting outside for a while where it's a chilly 30 degrees, Glenn invites me inside to sit on his sauna bench, which now feels pleasantly hot. The elements of sauna are pretty basic. You know, the heart of the sauna is the stove. The kiwas is the Finnish word. And so, you know, most often uh, wood fired in Minnesota. He says ventilation is also key, good air movement. And the last ingredient is steam. So when we throw water and we make steam, steam called wolu, it's like this Finnish thing. It's very spiritual. It's an essence of sauna. Like good sauna is good steam. Those rocks are so hot. It just evaporates almost instantly, huh? That's right, yeah. Turning water to steam right there. And it carries the heat, right? Glenn, thank you for inviting me into your backyard sauna. It's great to have you, brother. I mean, I love sharing good heat and, and good sauna with good people. From Auerbach's house, I head over to the other side of Minneapolis to Theodore Wirth Park, where a sauna he helped design is parked outside a cross-country ski chalet. It's called the 612 Sauna Society. It's a cooperatively run mobile public sauna built out of an ice fishing trailer. Anyone can pay 40 bucks for an hour and a half long session. Members get reduced rates. Jessica Nelson Roll joined the society with her husband six years ago, shortly after she took her first ever sauna on a cold December night. Everyone was so welcoming and it was just like the feeling of like this bliss and like um, you know, like when you get a massage and afterwards you just melt and you're like, okay, life is good. <laughs> and that's kind of, that's what I felt after the first sauna. No, Co-op members say they're drawn to the communal nature of sitting together in a sauna and cooling off outside. 
Kirk Jensen is a co-op board member who also volunteers to host at the sauna. He says it can also be a quiet experience. For a hardcore fan, sauna's like church, you know. You get in there, you shut up, it's your time for reflection. It's, it's that centering yourself period and it's not meant to be this big social thing. I tend to lean the other way, so I tend to have music going and you know, there's a lot of conversations and, and, and very animated, interactive kind of stuff. Um, you know, and there's room for everybody within that environment. Nearly 300 members have joined the Sauna Cooperative since it formed in 2016, including Sam Tysberg and Katie Kaufman. I think Sauna, for me, it gives me an opportunity to do something where I'm actually choosing to not think about anything else. And it's a really active choice to, to ignore other things in my life and just focus and work. For me, it's just been about like getting um, some warmth in the in the cold Minnesota winter and like coming into a community space uh, when you're very isolated in the winter time. Since the 612 Sauna Society started, other sauna experiences have sprouted around the Twin Cities and beyond. Some so-called saunapreneurs offer guided saunas. Others drop off rental saunas on trailers and people's driveways. Still others emphasize plunging into cold water after leaving a hot sauna. I think we're just on the leading edge of this. I mean, it's, it's burgeoning certainly, but I think there's more to go yet. You know, and we've got plenty of room for the community to expand. You know, we could be like Starbucks and have a sauna on every corner probably, but we're nowhere near market saturation, I don't think. About two hours to the north in Duluth, Minnesota, is one of the largest new saunapreneurs in the region. Cedar and Stone offer sauna experiences on Lake Superior. They also design and build saunas for customers all around the country. Since launching in early 2020, they've grown to more than 40 employees. Our, our business is about stress relief. We're a stress relief company that happens to do that through this centuries-old practice of sound. CEO and founder Justin Juntman says projects range from fifty dollars to $100,000 for custom home saunas. Business owners are also adding them to yoga studios, gyms, and wellness facilities. Juntman says the health benefits of sauna that his grandparents preached have now been validated by science. That kind of research has now been picked up by every podcast, every outlet, and saying, wait a minute, this thing is really good for us and it's good for our hearts, and it's good for our joints, it's good for our immune systems, it's good for our sleep. Um, and all of those things, I think the world wants right now. The world is sort of trying to say, how do we live more intentional, more healthy lives in the face of a more and more digitized, fast-paced world? One of Cedar and Stone's most recent and most ambitious projects was to build a floating sauna on an old barge. It's been moored in a slip on Lake Superior next to a hotel since late November. People can book guided public or private sessions. A main attraction is the cold plunge area, where people can dunk in frigid Lake Superior, barely above freezing, after soaking in a 200-degree sauna. I had to give it a try. Sauna guide Zane Brzezowski walked me through the process. Here at Cedar and Stone, we embrace what's called the thermic cycle, which is hot, cold, rest, rehydrate, and repeat. And so this is, of course, the hot part. After about 15 minutes, I told Zane I was ready. I pulled on some wool socks and ventured out into the cold. I always remind folks that that cold water takes your breath away, right? And so uh, I'm taking a few deep breaths as I'm coming down here, gets yourself oxygenated. and. Uh, and then when you hop in there, it's easy to want to tense up, but just breathe through it and uh, relax and enjoy it. All right, I'm going to try and I'm going to do this now before I get any colder. Yeah, catch your breath. Deep breaths, find your calm. Just be present. That's it, okay. Nice and easy getting out. Woo. I feel better now. You feel good when you get in, and then when you get in there, it's like you said, you just want to get out and you have to really settle into that. Yeah, yeah. 
But it's amazing, it just makes you feel alive, doesn't it? Absolutely. And it's just crazy seeing all the ice around me. <laughs> and I was just at this waddle.